Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have an unboxing. We are going to be taking a look inside the box of the Fujimi Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. This recreates, I believe, a 1971 Nissan Skyline GTR. A car which I hadn't heard of personally until the late 1990s when the PlayStation and Gran Turismo video game came along. And that introduced me and I think perhaps a lot of people around the world to the Nissan Skyline. But this one, of course, is much earlier. Uh, this may be the first of the Skylines. Please correct me uh, if I'm wrong on that. I think it could be. Uh, so Nissan, um, there was no Nissan when I was young in the UK. There was Datsun. Uh, and I'm fairly sure that this particular uh, model of Nissan or Datsun was not imported or sold in the UK as a, as a rule. I don't remember seeing them. Um, we, we certainly did have Datsuns like the, uh, the Cherry and the Sunny and so on and so forth, but but not these sort of more high-end models. So um, uh, not something that I've ever been really familiar with in, in reality. Anyway, let's take a look. So apologies, first of all, the box is a bit grubby um, just because of where it's been stored, uh, but I think the contents are pretty well packed and, and looking in good shape. So the box, we've got this photograph of a real 1971 Nissan Skyline. Um, cool. I think that these wheels are not the style of wheels that come in the kit. I could be wrong, but I think the style of wheels in the kit are different to what you see on the box there. These look like aftermarket sports wheels, possibly. I think we got stock ones in the box, but I don't know for sure. Okay, so um, a nice illustration of the real car there. Same illustration on the side here, with, I think, some information on the real car. The only bits I can make it are 1970 GTR and double red cam. So I think we're talking about the real car there. Some sort of required paint guide here. Uh, not sure which series of paints that's referring to, but it's pretty simple, isn't it? Three different blacks, silver, orange, and red. Uh, okay, similar illustration, same detail. Yeah, Fujimi, 124th scale. You can see the shape. box is a bit out of shape there. Uh, and then on finally on here, uh, some English script just pointing out that you need uh, that you need paint and glue to assemble, etc. Um, this is probably the same information here and some uh, some warning uh, icons here. Uh, I think uh, don't play Pac-Man. Uh, you could get pizza stuck to your face and uh, uh, don't set yourself on fire, I think. Uh, all good advice. Okay, right, what comes in the box then? Let's take a look. Uh, instruction sheets, we will take a look at that in a moment. Let's look at some plastic first of all, starting off with body shell. So, open get this out and see how she is okay nice looking body shell really really a complete body shell there bonnet closed hood closed so curbside kit no engine detail i expect in this one uh yeah everything is there the all the sills and front and rear end panels are all in place there i don't think there's really anything required anything to do on the body shell apart from the detail pieces Got a strengthener in there, which is nice. Bearing in mind the experience I had unboxing a, a Revel Trans Am kit recently where the A pillars had bowed out because of pressure on the roof. That's certainly certainly uh, doing a, a job there of helping to support the roof. Um, looks like perhaps the door handles are moulded in. We've got sort of side rubbing strips or maybe they're just sort of body lines moulded in. Uh, okay, yeah, so actual, actual moulded through uh, holes in the front air dam there. Uh, yeah, locations for the lights, bumpers, and so on. Uh, top fence there. Yeah, pretty nice. Looks good. Tires. So we've got okay, we've got uh, a we've got a metal axle in there and poly caps, which is sort of the Tamiya way of doing things. So that's where I first came across it. Let's have a look at these tires. What have we got there? Uh, not sure if I can bring that into focus. Can I? Can I? Can I? We've got some sidewall detail there. Formula. Dunlop. Okay. Not too sure if you can make that out on the camera. Doesn't want to focus on that. Not really. Hmm. It does say Dunlop on there. I'm sure of it. And we've got this tread pattern. Again, I don't seem to be able to get that nicely in focus for you. Yeah, hopefully you can see that a tread pattern which looks reasonable to me nice okay right what else we have the chrome pieces 
which are fairly limited on this kit, reasonably limited. This ain't no Cadillac. Uh, we've got the front grille molded in one piece with the grille texture there. Judging by the photo on the box, that needs darkening down, possibly just straightforward painting black. And the headlamp bezels, headlamp surrounds there. Tail light surrounds, front and rear bumpers, molded so that the attachment gates are in places where you won't see them on the finished model. That's a smart move. I do like that. Well done. And then I think these are badges for the C pillars, which may require some detail painting, or there may be decals for them. I don't know. Okay, clear pieces. I'll leave these in the poly bag as I tend to do. One piece glazing unit for front, rear, and side windows. Great. Why not do that? It looks good. It's straightforward to handle. Yeah, I love it. Tail light lenses there, they're already tinting red. Possibly front indicator lenses there, not too sure. Uh, which we need tinting amber or so. If not, maybe these are. Not sure what all these are for, or if they're all even required for this kit. We will find out. We have, which has been joined by a buzzing fly. I hope you can't hear that, that's horrible. Um, we have on here the headlamps, which are joined together in twin units to fit into that chrome grill we just saw. Good. And I'm not sure what these are. These sort of clear rails. Not sure what those are for, to be quite honest. Maybe we will find it as we go along. Okay, I don't know why I'm cutting these bags open because they're only stapled closed, so I can just open them manually. Um, it does take some of the excitement out of it for you, I realise. Right, so we have here the one piece interior tub, which is fairly simple. Quite a nice, boxy, crisp centre console moulding. I do like that, a sort of armrest or cassette box between the front seats, I guess, there. Looks fairly good. Side detail. Really quite limited, uh, not much going on at all there. Back seat is moulded in, rear parcel shelf, good. Uh, we have the front bucket sport seats, they look decent. They look to be one piece seats, yeah, just the one piece moulded uh, molded for each seat. I think that's fine. Dashboard here, right hand drive dashboard, this is for the Japanese market, I guess, this car. With a separate binnacle for the instruments. Separate instrument cluster, I think they have to go into the binnacle. Handbrake, uh, gear lever, those wheel rims. They're pretty wide, aren't they? Nice and fat, I like those. And again, I think they're a little, yeah, not quite the sort of mini light style alloy sports wheels you saw in the box, but I think they could still look really good. And the sports steering wheel there, um, which sort of seems to be in the image of a classic 60s GT wheel. Bullet shaped mirrors and uh, Steering column with uh, with the stalks attached. Good. Okay, let's have a look. In the final poly bag, this is the last plastic. Okay, kicking off, we've got this pretty nice, crisply molded one piece chassis floor pan. Um, really similar in style to the sort of 1950s, 1960s American AMT annual kits, really. Rear axle and drivetrain all molded in place for presumably that metal axle to go through. Yeah, uh, I guess spare wheel well moulded in place there. Part of the exhaust system moulded in place. Transmission and sump moulded in place. I mean, with a bit of detail painting, I think it look, I think it look fine. I think this is a kind of ducktail rear spoiler. Part of the exhaust system there. I think part of the front suspension, steering gear, front axle. Um, probably the tie rod or track rod for the front suspension. Um, uh, more parts of the front suspension, I think. Upper upper right arms, upper wishbone right arms. Not sure, probably. And then we've got separate uh, wheel hubs with coilovers. I take it that's for the front end. Um, yeah, I think we've got tailpipes there for the exhaust, potentially. Maybe some wheel backs there. Okay, looking nice. Right, what else is in the box? Decals. Um, pretty simple decal sheet. Some different, uh, I assume those are Japanese license plates. Uh, a vanity plate, a sort of dealership plate option, and then some actual car insignia that go on the go on the car as well. And yeah, the gauges as well there. All right, that looks pretty useful. It was never gonna be a really extravagant uh, instruction sheet, I don't think. Right, so onto the instructions. Pretty, pretty skimpy, uh, skinny, instruction sheet so yeah we've got a parts diagram on the front here which is very useful indeed 
Uh, most of this, of course, is uh, localised for the, uh, the Far Eastern market, so much of it I can't read. Um, wheels go together with the polycaps, yes, onto these separate front coilovers or McPherson struts. And then we have the yeah front axle and steering gear going on. Looks like they're saying don't glue that, so I think you've got poseable steering there. What I thought was more front suspension gear is actually for the rear. So we've got, I guess, lower wishbones for the rear there. Uh, okay, moving on. Two pieces for the, the exhaust system that fit on there, and then the tailpipes. Then we move on to the interior, which is quite straightforward by the looks of it. Seats go in, handbrake and gear levers go in. Dashboard assembly is reasonably straightforward. You add your decals at that point. You fit your interior completed onto the chassis or base plate. And then you turn your attention to the body, getting that one piece glazing in. At this stage, they suggest then going to town with the final trim and assembly. Grill, bumpers, headlamps, mirrors, windshield wipers. Same on the rear end, bumpers, lights, spoiler. And then the whole lot goes together uh, in, in one piece for the finished model. Typically, I would probably unite the body and chassis together before doing all the final details, but uh, uh, maybe that's just me. So I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's not super detailed. It's really in a similar vein to the Fujimi uh, original old Mini that I uh, unboxed and then built a couple of months ago in terms of what you get. Uh, not so many options on this one. You don't get left and right hand drive options or different trim variants as you did with the Mini. But overall, uh, I, think it, I think it looks quite nice. And this is probably going to be the next one I build. So there we go. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for watching.